Yes, yeah, so welcome to the Sully's Garden, folks. It's springtime, right? Bloody cold down here in Victoria. But wherever you are, if it's nice and warm, lucky you. Well, for us, we're coping with it. We're going to push through it and persevere, as will our plants. And I thought today, let's talk about roses. Now, I haven't done a lot of roses recently. I probably did one pruning segment a while ago. Um, and I was meant to go around and print all my other roses since then. And I think I used a nice clean pair of secateurs using the metho spray and all things like that. Well, the reality is I've got about 70 roses to prune on top of the other 2000 plants that need to be hedged and shaped. And I simply don't have the time to use a pair of secateurs, be it all sprayed and all that. So guess what I brought out? The hedge trimmers. That's right, I hit these with the hedge trimmers and I haven't come back since to see if I need to clean them up. So. Let's have a look. Now, as I'm looking closely here, you can see damaged tips that need to be cleaned up. That needs to be cut back down there. This one's not bad, that's been cut okay. Look at that, again, broken. Look how resilient these plants are. Look how clean the leaves are. So we haven't got any dye back on this. We haven't got any canker showing up on these plants here at the moment. And it's very, very clean. And that's not to say that we don't come back and clean these up. These still need to be cleaned up by hand. And we'll need to do that, especially when they finish flowering. But also look out for aphids. And I spoke about that on a previous segment on uh, peach and nectarine trees that can be quite easily decimated by aphids. So can roses. Whereas the black aphids on those fruit trees, the green ones come to these roses here and they go suck all the sap out of the buds, all the new growth. And before you realize you've got a plant that's going backwards. Now, the thing about insects and diseases, if you can cast your mind back for those who've been following me on a segment that I did on bricks counting, and that's checking the mineral density of your plants, the ability for it to be able to be nutritionally rich if you're eating it. The same goes with flowering plants. If the bricks count, if I did it, and I should do a bricks count in fact, but I'm not doing it now, but we will do one. If I did a bricks count in this and we got it kicking up high enough, we, that would mean the plant will have enough energy and minerals within itself to warn off pests and diseases. Now, I hardly get black spot. All but one plant, and I'll be honest with you, this one here in particular, and I haven't done a lot of work on it. Now, this isn't this season's growth. This is last summer's growth, folks, right? And it hasn't dropped its leaves. It's got a very small amount of black spot, no other discoloration. And on top of that, we've got all this wonderful new growth coming on. So yes, we should pick all these leaves off, and that's what I'm gonna do. Well, I like the thing, I'm gonna do it. And I might just do it as we're speaking, but I shouldn't just pull them off, I should get secateurs. It's quite rigid. Cut them off. And as far as black spot developing further on these plants, I get very little, if at all, any on them. And that is because, and I've been in this one to death, is because the life in the soil is up there. It's vibrant. It's bursting with microbial activity. That is the secret to healthy gardens. Bottom line, end of story. Everything else is irrelevant. If your soil is healthy, everything growing out of it will be healthy. You know, the exception will be given on some certain plants that are susceptible and just constantly uh, carrying a virus in and within them, like, you know, the dieback on conifers. In fact, that's what I'm thinking about here, where they get canker and you can't control that. But with roses and black spot in this topic here and aphids and mildew, build the life in the soil, feed them the right stuff, not just you know, a compost, put some organic material there like a manure or our superfood, and that will give your plants the chance to fend and warn off those pests on their own. They can't digest uh, a plant that's got a high bricks count, and I'm talking about pests, and diseases can't penetrate through the cell wall on plants that have got a high bricks count, which means a vibrant with energy and nutrients. So if these are nutrient rich, then the diseases and the insects will not affect them. And the only way you can do that is, and it's not just with our products, it's with natural organic, let's call it organic, loosely used the word, um, natural products that are not made from synthetic chemicals. Otherwise you're disconnecting your plant from the earth below where it's growing in. And that's vital that they stay connected. Without that connection, everything above ground folks is useless. Plants, animals, food, everything. 
and even your roses. So you want healthy roses, no aphids, no black spot on them. And if you do get any, very, very little of it, so that means no spraying required, start feeding the ground properly. And I recommend our superfood, compost, or even our planting mix. Check it out on our website, vasiliesgarden.com. Everything you need and our local stockers all over the States. If you need to find one, just go to the website from me, Vasily, and Marisi.